We understand how annoying it can be to invest a lot of money in your PPC campaigns only to see disappointing results. PPC campaigns can give your sales a quick boost, but if you are not getting the results you want, it's likely because you are making some common mistakes that are hurting your campaign success. Hello everyone, I'm Ankita Patel, product evangelist at Sellerapp and today in this video we'll look at why your Amazon PPC campaigns are not converting and what can you do to turn things around. Well, here's a quick overview of topics we are covering in this video. Before we begin, if you find this video helpful, click the like button below and subscribe to Seller App so you don't miss out on more exciting Amazon selling tutorials in the future. And don't forget to follow us on our social media channels for more helpful content. Let's get started. First is non-segmenting your campaigns clearly. Not having clear segments for your campaign can make things tough. When you try to reach different groups with mixed up campaigns, it gets messy. Each ad campaign has its own goals and your keywords should match those goals. Imagine you are selling both running shoes and office chairs. If you mix these two products in the same campaign, uh, it becomes confusing. People interested in running shoes might not care about office chairs and vice versa. So it's crucial to keep things organized. Let's say you are promoting running shoes. Uh, instead of using a broad keyword like shoes, which could include everything from high heels to sandals, it's better to be specific. You might use running shoes for men or women's trail running shoes. This way you're reaching the right audience directly. Now imagine you are a customer searching for running shoes. Uh, if you type in best running shoes for marathon, you would want to see ads tailored to that exact search. That's where exact matches come in handy. They ensure your ad appears when someone types in those precise keywords, increasing the chances of a click. Sure, broad keywords might seem cheaper upfront, uh, but they often attract irrelevant clicks, wasting your budget. It's like fishing with a wide net. You catch a lot, but most of it isn't what you want. Some sellers rush to include keywords in one campaign, hoping to cover all the bases. But it's like trying to juggle too many balls at once. You're bound to drop some. Instead, focus on a few keywords that are directly relate to your product. By keeping your campaign simple and targeted, you can analyze the results more effectively. It's like walking before you run. You build momentum steadily, ensuring your campaign stay on the track. Now, what happens to your ACoS and order volume when you choose the exact keywords? Well, when you pick exact keywords for your Amazon ads, it can have a big impact on your sales and how much you want to spend. You see, there are a lot of different types of keywords you can choose from, but not everyone knows what to do with them. Let's say you are selling a uh, campaign gear. Um, if you use uh, broad keywords like outdoor equipment, uh, you might get clicks from people looking for things like fishing gear or hiking boots. But if you use exact keywords like camping tents, uh, you will attract customers specifically interested in tents. Now, it might take some time to organize your campaigns and figure out which keywords work best, but trust me, it's worth it. When you test out different parts of the market, you can adjust your budget accordingly. Keywords that bring in lots of sales and can get more money, while ones that don't perform well can be removed. But if you start with too many keywords all at once, it's like trying to juggle too many balls. You won't be able to understand what's working and what's not, which can hold back your business growth. So it might seem overwhelming to organize everything at first, but you'll be happy with the results in the end. Second is using brand keywords uh, doesn't always mean you'll get better conversion rates. Using branded keywords uh, doesn't always mean you'll get better conversion rates, right? Normally when people search using the brand name, they are more likely to buy. That's why I often suggest using non-branded keywords to get your brand out there and using branded keywords to engage with people who already know your brand. But here's the thing, just looking at the overall performance of your ad campaign might not give you the full picture. For example, let's say your campaign looks like it's doing great with a 30% ACoS, but when you dig deeper into the data, you find out that your non-branded terms have a 90% ACoS, while your branded terms have only a 10% ACoS. 
You might wonder why not keep everything in the same campaign? Well, by separating your keywords, you get a clear picture of how each one is performing. Even though you might assume that the people uh, searching for your brand will buy regardless, it's still a good idea to uh, separate your branded keywords. Here's why it gives you more control over your budget when you have separate campaigns for branded and non-branded keywords, you can get uh, specific budgets for each. This helps you manage your spending better. You get better insights from your data. When your campaigns are organized like this, you can see exactly where your ACoS and CTR might need adjusting. This means you can make changes more quickly and effectively. Third is keep track of spending on non-converting keywords. Don't forget to keep an eye on how much money you are spending on your non-converting keywords. Every brand is different, so it's important to keep tweaking and checking your campaigns regularly. For example, let's say you're selling uh, gardening tools. You might have keywords like best garden shovel or high quality pruning shears. But if these keywords aren't bringing in any sales, they are just costing you money. Even if your Amazon PPC campaigns seem really well set up, it's still a good idea to check on them every month. The way uh, you know you can figure out what's working and what's not. You might find out what a certain category like lawn care equipment isn't generating any sales. Understanding which keywords are converting might take some extra efforts, but it's worth it. Start by looking closely at each keyword. You might find some keywords that are getting clicks, but you still need to dig deeper. Filter out the keywords that are spending money without bringing in any sales. Once you do this, you'll get better results for your non-converting keywords, which will make your campaign more successful in the long run. Now, if you don't want to do this manually, no worries. Let Seller App handle it for you. Just go to your Seller App dashboard, click on Advertising, then Insights, and choose the negative search terms. There you'll find all the underperforming search terms in your campaigns. Simply click on Mark Negative to add them as negatives for your campaigns. Simple, right? Fourth is don't forget to use the data from automatic campaigns. Make sure you take advantage of the data you receive from automatic campaigns. Setting up manual PPC targeting gives you total control over your campaigns, but it's also smart to run automatic campaigns to see how the market responds. Here's how it works. You set up an automatic campaign and Amazon does the targeting for your uh, for you, you know, based on your product details. Then after about 10 days, you check the data. You can download search term reports to see which keywords people are using to find your products. For instance, let's say you're selling smartphone cases in your automatic campaign. Amazon might show up your ad to people searching for iPhone accessories or Samsung phone protection. By checking the search term reports, you can see exactly which keywords are driving clicks and sales. The best part is automatic campaigns don't eat up a big chunk of your budget. Since they are just test campaigns, you can gather valuable data without spending too much money. Then armed with this information, you can fine tune your manual campaigns to target the most effective keywords. Fifth is check your ACoS and your TACOS. Now, also keep an eye on your ACoS and TACOS uh, to understand how well your campaigns are performing. Sometimes you might be losing money on certain products without even realizing it. For instance, let's say you are running an ad campaign for a range of skincare products. At first glance, uh, everything seems fine because you are making sales. But when you dig deeper into your data, you realize that some products are actually costing you money. Uh, to advertise then they are ringing in so as you become more experienced with your ppc campaigns it's important to look at both your ad revenue and organic revenue together this gives you a clearer picture of how your campaigns are doing plus have uh, you know having detailed information um, helps you avoid wasting your advertising budget in the future some people make the mistake of only looking at their overall a cost for the entire account when deciding on their budget for the next month instead it's crucial to analyze the a cost for each product individually and calculate the tacos this way you can make informed decisions about where to allocate more funds and where to cut back Ultimately, successful PVC campaigns are all about analyzing the numbers and making strategic decisions. If you are only looking at the surface level of your account without delving deeper into the data, your campaigns might not be as profitable as they could be. Next is change your campaign structure. Once you are sure, 
Now, when it comes to changing your campaign structure, it's important to proceed with caution, uh, especially if you are unsure about the impact it might have on your results. If your campaign is already performing well, it's generally best not to make uh, too many changes. For example, let's say you are running a campaign for a clothing brand. You have set it up with a broad structure that includes uh, various types of clothing. Everything seems to be going smoothly with consistent sales and good feedback from uh, the customers. Now you might feel tempted to reorganize your campaign to have more control over your specific keywords of products. But if you are not certain about how these changes will affect your results, it's better to hold off. Setting a clear structure for your campaign is essential for maintaining control. This becomes even more challenging when you have multiple ad groups within the same campaign that you want to manage individually. A common scenario is having a broad ad group for specific keywords or discovering that some keywords aren't being used effectively within your current structure. Making changes to a poorly organized campaign can have a negative impact on all other ad groups and the overall performance. So here are some signs that your campaign structure might not be working well. Uh, you struggle to achieve uh, you know, consistent results. Uh, your PPC visitors aren't generating enough inquiries or sales. The customers you are attracting aren't the right fit for your business. Despite making optimizations, you are not seeing any significant changes. Seventh is try using video ads to boost your campaigns. Make sure you're using video ads to boost all of your ad campaigns. Around 68% of shoppers prefer learning about new products through video. And here's an eye opener. About 84% of these shoppers are more likely to buy a product or service after watching a brand's video. Plus 66% of them would rather watch a video than read long boring descriptions. It's crucial to make the most of all the ad types in your campaigns. Sometimes even great accounts with strong ACoS forget that they can do even better with sponsored video ads. Some folks might think Amazon is pushing them to use these services, but that's not entirely true. Not using any of these ad features can be just as damaging as relying too heavily on one and ignoring the rest. And if you don't use these creative ad types properly, it could even affect your rankings. For example, let's say you're selling workout gear. Uh, instead of just showing pictures of your products, you could create a video demonstrating how to use them effectively. This could catch the attention of potential customers who prefer watching videos uh, over you know, reading text. Eighth is ensure that positive numbers lead to conversions. Uh, ensure that your good numbers are uh, translating into conversions. Uh, sometimes uh, sponsored display ads might not have a low A cost, which could make you think your campaign is doing great, but it's essential to dig deeper and look at other metrics like CPI. For example, let's say you are running a sponsored display ad campaign for your new line of kitchen gadgets. Initially, you notice that your A cost is impressively low, so you feel optimistic about the campaign success. However, when you examine the CPI, uh, you realize that although many people are viewing and clicking on your ads, very few are actually making purchases. A low A cost might indicate that your ads are getting attention, but it doesn't necessarily mean they are leading to sales. Relying solely on the sponsored display uh, impressions to uh, gauge your overall A cost or campaign A cost can be misleading. To create truly successful ad campaigns, it's crucial to understand the underlying reasons behind your numbers. By analyzing various metrics and understanding how they relate to each other, uh, you can make more informed decisions about your advertising strategy. So make sure you're not just focusing on uh, low ACoS numbers, but also on metrics that indicate actual conversions and sales. Ninth is keep a close eye on your conversion rates. It's really important to keep an eye on your conversion rates. They tell you if your products are connecting with your market and if people are actually uh, buying after clicking on your ads. But what exactly should you be looking at when you are checking your you know, conversion rates? Uh, first off, uh, make sure you're tracking your conversion rates over time. Uh, looking at them month by month gives you a better understanding than just clicking or checking them over short periods. And if you keep tabs on them for a whole year, you'll start to see patterns and understand when your products are more popular during certain seasons. Now let's talk about some common mistakes people make with conversion rates. Ignoring them altogether, some folks just don't pay attention to their conversion rates, which is a big no-no. 
uh, only tracking conversion rates at the account level it's important to break it down further and look at conversion rates for individual campaigns or even the products not understanding where the conversions are happening in the market you need to know where your sales are coming from so you can uh, you know focus your efforts in the right areas by paying close attention to your conversion rates and avoiding these common mistakes you'll be better equipped to understand how your products are performing and make smarter decisions about your advertising strategy 10th is being inactive um, lowers your optimization rate Keeping your campaigns active is crucial for maintaining a high optimization rate. It's important to optimize your campaigns every day, regardless of how many products you have on Amazon. This includes uh, making adjustments to your bids when necessary. There are three main metrics you need to focus on for optimization. First is budget. Uh, segment your campaign carefully so you can concentrate on your budget on high-performing campaigns. Uh, make sure none of your campaigns exceed their budget limits. Uh, keywords. Keep uh, an eye on both the positive and the negative keywords as they can change throughout your campaign. Uh, regularly optimize your most profitable keywords and make it a daily habit to review and adjust your keyword strategy. And next is bids. Um, adjust your bids based on the performance but avoid making decisions too quickly. Uh, it's best to let a campaign run for at least 10 days before making any significant changes to your keywords or the bidding strategy. By staying active and optimizing these uh, key metrics regularly, you can ensure that your campaigns are performing at their best and maximizing your chances of success on Amazon. Well, Amazon's algorithms are changing uh, to help sellers connect with their target customers more effectively. However, these are times uh, when Amazon PPC campaigns don't meet the goals you have set. So there are many reasons why a PPC campaign might not work as expected. It could be because you have been inactive or relied too much on automatic campaign results or perhaps you have overlooked important metrics or made changes to your campaigns without enough data to support them. So the list of possible reasons could go on. Optimizing your campaigns is something that needs to be done uh, continuously. Additionally, uh, keeping an eye on the market and your competition is crucial, even though it can take up a lot of time. Whether you are looking for a broad overview of Amazon advertising, detailed analysis of current market trends, or insights into specific product categories, the Celera PPC agency is here to lend a hand. We can work with you to come up with a solid plan to get your brand out there, lower your advertising costs, and keep your business growing. So feel free to reach out to us at support at celerap.com. And that's it for this video, everyone. Thanks for watching. Your support means a lot to us. It encourages us to bring out more helpful videos like this. So if you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe to Seller App. If you guys want us to create detailed seller guides on any specific topics, you can leave your suggestions in the comment section below and we'll definitely create them for you. And don't forget to follow us on our social media channels for more helpful content. If you haven't already, click the bell icon so that you will never miss another video. And as always, happy selling!